Let's look at another projectile motion problem. And this time we're going to actually answer some questions about uh, the object that's projected. <clears throat> so the situation is Kevin hits a baseball at three feet above the ground with an initial velocity of 100 feet per second at an angle of 18 degrees with the horizontal. So a good picture is needed. So it starts off three feet above the horizontal. That's where the ball makes contact with his bat. And then it gets launched at an angle of uh, 18 degrees with the horizontal. And it's going 150 feet per second to begin with. And so we saw that we can come up now with uh, the vertical component and the horizontal component of this initial vector. So we'll do that here. So x is going to equal uh, 150 cosine of 18 degrees. And again, that's because cosine of 18 is x over 115. So if you solve, uh, you'll get you'll get a solve for x. You get this. And so when you put that in the calculator, you get 142. Point six five eight. So that's his initial horizontal component, the initial horizontal velocity. And y would just be 150 sine of 18 degrees, which turns out to be 46.353. So now let's come up with our equations. Now this is x. I kind of wanted to say x of t because it's a function of time. So let's just make a little adjustment there. And we saw that the horizontal the horizontal position is easily modeled by viewing this as a distance equals rate times time situation. So the rate initially is 142.658 feet per second. Let's put in those units. So I'm going to write 142.353 point three five three T except that's not what I want because I want it to be one forty two point six five eight and then recall that the vertical position is going to be given by the initial height plus the initial vertical velocity times time and then the gravitational constant times time squared, and since we're in feet, we're going to use negative 16 t squared. And so y of t, y of t would be the initial height is three feet, plus the initial velocity is 40. Uh, the initial vertical velocity is 46.353 t minus 16 t squared. And now we have everything we need to know to answer the situation. So now we go to our calculator. So take out your calculator. Make sure you're in parametric mode. And also make sure you're in degrees. Now in y equals, you'll see I have, of course, an x1, uh, 142.658t. And in y, y1, I have 3 plus 46.353t minus 16 t squared. A couple of things to keep in mind are mistakes that a lot of students make. They forget the t's, so make sure you don't forget the t's. Um, and I think generally that's really it. Um, so just make sure you make sure you don't you don't forget the t's and also make sure you're in degree mode. Um, go to your window. Now our window we have to use a little bit of our sort of sense of the world in terms of what we're going to use for our window values. T min should obviously be zero, 
we want this to situation to start at t equals zero. Uh, and your t max, just think, I mean, a ball that you, or a baseball that's hit, you know, how, how long does it stay in the air? Certainly one second is too short and 20 seconds is unreasonable. So I'm, I put four seconds and we'll see if that's enough. Um, t step, t step really determines how often do you want the calculator to graph a point. If you make it like one, then it's just going to graph it every one second, and your your uh, the parabola you look, you're looking at is going to look really like rigid and and have a lot of uh, it's not going to look smooth. So we're going to use a t step of 0 0.01, and that's going to allow us to get all of our answers within a hundredth of a second, which I think is certainly good enough for for uh, for us. Your x min uh, should be zero, and x max you just want to think how far away. Um, how far away would a baseball like this land? And so, I, you know, I think it, this is just kind of a judgment call, but I think maybe 500 feet, hopefully. I mean, it doesn't really matter as long as we get the whole picture in the window. So I chose 500. X scale of 1 is fine. Y min, I started at negative 20, and the reason I did that is because obviously the, the um, we don't want to be going, like, below the ground. However, um, the words on the, the calculator screen, if, if you made your y min zero, they would kind of obstruct some of the picture. So I make it go down to negative 20. And with y max, you want to think, since that corresponds to the height of this ball, I mean, how high do you expect uh, the baseball to go? You know, what would its max be just to ballpark it? I would say, uh, you know, I'm get, trying to get away with 90 because the gravity is going to immediately start acting on it. So so 90 should be good. So after the, at this point, I'm going to hit graph and see if I get the full picture. And it looks like I do. So I'm going to sketch that picture here just so we can identify everything we need to, to look for. So it looks roughly like that, right? And that's obviously a three. And so this is this, every point on this parabola indicates the position of the ball at a given time value. So, so this is our, uh, so the x-axis is sort of the x-coordinate of our point, and the y-axis really is the height of the ball. And so there's no axis for time, but that's going to be indicated sort of on the screen when you when you trace. So the things that we're obviously interested in are things like this. This is the max, the uh, maximum, um, well, the y-coordinate is the max height of the ball. Uh, this is when the ball hits the ground. And so now let's go to our calculator. Now there's no, in parametric mode, there's no um, calculating, you know, cal second calc max function. What we can do though is just trace. So if you hit trace, you'll see the cursor on the screen. And if you press the arrow left and right, it traces the actual path of this of this ball. And so since we're, we made our t-step point zero, 1, it's really moving along every time you press the arrow, it's moving along at, at you know, a hundredth of a second. That's why it kind of takes a long time. But let's, let's, um, you know, let's get to our key points. Let's go find the max. So we're going to go find the max. So I'm going to answer this question first, since it's closest on my, my screen. To find the max, I'm just going to hit over until I'm at the max. Now, how do I know I'm at the max? If you just focus on the y coordinates, right, as you're moving right, they keep rising. Stop once you see it start to go down. And it looks like it stopped going down about there. So 36 point five seven one thirty six point five seven one feet that's the maximum height of the ball and that uh, you can even see the time when that happens it happens at one point four or five seconds um, how long will the ball be in the air well to answer that, we need to go trace until 
it's on the ground. And so if we keep tracing over, and again, this takes a little, a, you know, a little bit of time only because um, we made our T-step so small. But it'll stay in the air until it hits the ground. So I'm going to go find when I hit the ground. And that would happen when y is 0. And it looks like y is 0, or roughly 0. Uh, at about 2.96 seconds. So if we, at 2.96, it's like, you know, 0 0.02 feet above the air. And at 2.97, it's a little, you know, below the ground. Um, so 2.96 is an adequate answer, I believe. We are within a hundredth. Uh, I think we're good. So 2.96 seconds. What's the horizontal distance traveled by the ball? Well, we, we can just look at the, the x coordinate, because that is our horizontal distance. It's 422.27 feet. And then this first question. So we got all these. Will the ball clear a 20-foot wall 400 feet away? Well, in order to answer that, we have to know how high, how high is this ball when we're uh, 400 feet away. So I'm going to move the cursor until I see the x value being 400, or roughly 400. So it's 400 roughly at 2.81 seconds, and the y coordinate is 6.91. So it looks like uh, when it's 400 feet away, it has a height of 6.91 feet, and certainly that wouldn't be high enough to reach over the ball, uh, reach over the wall rather. So the answer is no. It falls short. All right. So notice parametric mode is nice for answering all these questions, uh, as long as you have the patience to uh, to sort of trace. But make sure you make your t value uh, 0 0.01 so that you're within a hundredth um, of the true answers.